Like my shirt? Kanye West, producer, rapper, fashion designer, entrepreneur, politician, poop scooper, you name it, he's done it. Few artists can claim to have careers as long and impressive as Kanye's. He's managed to stay relevant for the better part of 15 years, which is fairly amazing when you think about it. But hey, let's just get right into what you came for. His albums, from worst to best, so without any further ado, let's let's go. I gotta do it, man. Dude. Mm. What are you doing? Huel! Mm. Hey, quit screwing around! Mm. We are here to do a job! I hear you. Ah, screw it. Mm. So at the very bottom here, I've placed Watch the Throne, which I think is a fairly common placement. It, it's an okay album. I, I'm not saying I dislike it, but um, it just doesn't really feel like a Kanye album, nor does it really feel like a Jay-Z album. I'm not sure exactly what it feels like. It kind of feels like two celebrities boasting over so-so beats. I mean, there are definitely some great songs on here. I think the first three tracks, No Church in the Wild, Lift Off, and... the Paris one, have established themselves to be classics, but um, I don't know, the rest of the album is kind of forgettable. It's definitely the Kanye album I've listened to the least. There's just not much of the classic Kanye grittiness or experimentation on here, and um, it just kind of feels like his most commercial outing, which I don't really like that much. Best track off here, in my opinion, would be No Church in the Wild. It's just the morning I heard some theaters are gonna show it in reverse. I heard it's the same movie, backward and forward. I heard the deleted scenes are the scenes, and the scenes are the deleted scenes. I heard Jesus died for our sins. You aren't actually trying to say that you're Jesus, are you? I am who you say I am. This album is about religion, and religion isn't real. So thus, it's low on the list. That's it, that's all, thank you. Okay, contrary to what many of you may think, uh, my placement of this album has nothing to do with its religious themes. There are a lot of faith-based albums that I really love. For example, Life of Pablo, another Kanye album. And some of my favorite artists, like Kendrick, also very commonly incorporate religious themes into their music. That does not bother me. I think music about theology can be very interesting, and delve into some very deep places. I just don't really think this album is one of those. It kind of feels like Kanye just reaffirming the fact that he is Christian at you. And, I mean, there are some good lines on here, but overall, I, I think these are his worst lyrics. Now, the beats, on the other hand, I think the beats, with the exception of um, a certain Chick-fil-A song, are very good. And there is a little bit of a Kanye experimentation on here, even if a little bit like Watch the Throne, it's a little more muted. I really like the ahead of the beat drums on Sella. Did everything but gave up. Stab my back, I came front. Still we win, we prayed up. And that car alarm beat on Use This Gospel, that's my shit right there. Speaking of songs like Use This Gospel, most of you probably will have heard the original Yandi cuts of these songs at this point, considering they've been bouncing around the internet for over six months. And to be honest, I, I think a lot of the Yandi cuts are actually better than what we ended up getting. Same I think goes for Everything We Need, which was originally The Storm. And why did he cut 80 degrees? Why did he do- why? It was so good! Even if you'd scrapped the really good lyrics you had and replaced them with weaker I'm religious lyrics, I, I'd still like it. The, the beat was so good, man! So yeah, um, I think there could have been more potential out of this than what we got, but I, I still enjoy listening to it. I listened to it a lot in the weeks following its release. Best track off here I'd say is On God, which, my God, is an absolute fucking bop. Time out, time out, time out, time out. I thought I was under the impression that this was going to be a rap. 808s and heartbreak. It is kind of low on the list, I know, I'm sorry. Now don't be fooled, just because I've placed it relatively low does not mean I do not think it was 
way ahead of its time, because it was. This is probably, without a doubt, Kanye's most influential album, and one of the most influential albums of the 21st century in general. I mean, I know I'm not the first to say it, but we wouldn't have artists like Drake if not for 808s. As much as I don't think Drake would like to admit that. But if I think this album was so impactful to the music scene, then why did I place it so low? Well, I mean, I still think it's a really good album. Um, but I do have some issues with it. I know Kanye's use of autotune on this album is, you know, artistic and all that, and I get it. It's just, it's just not really for me, personally. And also, yeah, songs like Pinocchio Story, which I know are very important to Kanye emotionally and reflect the difficult times he was going through when he put this album out, just, they just don't do it for me that much. Now, obviously, I can't go any further talking about this album if I don't address what was happening in Kanye's life around the time it was released. I'm sure you already know this, but basically Kanye's life was completely turned upside down. His mom, who was easily the person that he loved the most in the world and looked up to more than anyone else, passed away uh, shortly after the release of Graduation. Uh, his marriage fell apart, and he just lost his sense of direction. Which is part of why I'm so impressed that even though he was going through so much shit, he was still able to fairly quickly put this album out, and even with all those dark thoughts swirling around his head, he was able to innovate more than on any of his other al more than on any of his other albums. It's quite impressive, to be honest. And yeah, there are some really great tracks on this album. I mean, obviously there's Heartless and Love Lockdown, which were two huge hits, and yeah, very catchy songs. But Say You Will, Streetlights, and Paranoid are just fantastic songs and will probably go down as some of my absolute favorite Kanye songs. And then there's songs like Robocop, which um, I don't think that they're very good, but they're still absolute bops at the same time. And then there's Welcome to Heartbreak and See You in My Nightmares, which eh, I know most people like Welcome to Heartbreak, but uh, there are definitely better Kanye Kid Cudi collaborations out there. Much, much better. I'd say the best track off here is Paranoid. She could get menacing. Frightening, fine help. Yay. Hi, um, have, is this the Muslims I'm talking to? Okay, good. Um, I'm gonna go dumb. I just thought I'd let you know. I'm going to go dumb. Yeah, this is just a heads up. I guess since Kanye goes by Ye, this is technically his first self titled album. And this being a self titled album, actually makes a lot of sense since this is the album that I'd say delves deepest into who he is, and it does not shy away from going dark. The album kicks off with I Thought About Killing You, which, um, title probably speaks for itself. I really like this one. This is probably the most raw Kanye has ever gone, and that tone of simplicity and rawness carries through the rest of the album. Like, these are his most razor-thin beats. All mine is almost an acapella with how simplistic the beat is. But I really like that. I think it goes a long way into reflecting the theme that this is just Kanye's raw, unfiltered, bipolar self. Every track off here is about a very personal issue in Kanye's life. Some of them, like, I thought about killing you in Ghost Town are obviously more about how cold and dead inside he is. But then songs like Wouldn't Leave deal more with how badly he manages money. And even through all the rough patches and turbulence that has been Kanye's life, Kim Kardashian has stuck with him through it all. This album was pretty controversial, and a lot of people really didn't like it. And I can understand why. Um, considering his last project was Life of Pablo, people were probably holding out for another one hour long Kanye epic. And then they got a 20 minute album where he talks about how it's been a shaky ass year and he wants to kill you. But like, I just don't think there are any bad tracks off here. I think there are some very simple tracks off here that aren't necessarily his best. But even with this album's very short seven track run, I'd say for every no mistakes or wouldn't leave, there's a yikes or a ghost town. And yeah, ghost town is a fucking fantastic song. Ghost town alone moved this album up probably two slots. Yeah, so overall, this is definitely Kanye's most revealing album, and he does not hold anything back, and I really like that. Even if it is short and very minimalistic. I do really like Violent Crimes, but best track off here is still Ghost Town. Oh, 
Song Graduation, the album that ended 50 Cent's career, and the album that took Kanye from a successful rapper to a legend. And the reason for that is that he was more focused on bangers for this album than ever before. Unlike on College Dropout and Late Registration, where he chopped up soul samples, sped them up, and rapped in a very down-to-earth and enjoyably relatable way, on this album he's more trying to create pop hits that will send electricity through the stadiums. And yeah, he succeeds. I mean, Stronger is to this day still his most popular track. But I just can't help but feel that as catchy as this album is at points, there just isn't as much substance here as there is on some of his other albums. Now, to be fair, this is the album that got me into Kanye West, and until not that long ago, it was my personal favorite Kanye album. I mean, tracks like Good Morning, Champion, Flashing Lights, Homecoming, and Big Brother are... I mean, they're, they're really catchy, bro. They're really catchy. And I really do like them. But, I mean, like... Barry Bonds? Drunken Hot Girls? And then there's tracks on here like I Wonder and Good Life, which are... <laughs> meh. They're okay, I guess. There's some good features on here as well, like Mos Def and Lil Wayne. But then there's also like T-Pain's feature. Eh. Chris Martin is surprisingly good on Homecoming, though. So yeah, this is definitely the poppiest Kanye ever got. And it is the last classic Kanye album, you know, before his entire world got flipped on its head and 808s happened. So yeah, I don't have much more to say about it. Uh, if you're looking for an album that you can bop your head to, this is definitely it, but um, it just doesn't delve as deep as I would like it to. Best track off here, I would say, is a tie between Flashing Lights and Homecoming. We're really making it into some prime Yeezy territory with this one. I mean, where I even start? Life of Pablo is an album that I really respect. It's kind of an anti-album in many ways. I mean, like many people, the first few times I listened to it, I did not really like it, but it just grew on me, grew on me, until it was one of my personal favorites. I mean, as albums go, this is a weird one. I mean, it kept changing for months after it released. If we're talking about the initial version of the album, it would definitely be lower, but as time went on and he fixed the mixes and made just little tweaks here and there to kind of clean it up, I think what the album was trying to be just came together more and more. Now, when I say clean it up, I do not mean that this is a polished album. This is nowhere in the ballpark of being a polished album. And that is part of what I really, really like about it. I mean, this was the follow-up to Yeezus, so of course it wasn't going to be a clean pop album like Graduation was. I mean, the album kicks off with the fantastic ultralight beam, and then transitions into the huge hit Father Stretch My Hands Part 1. Beautiful morning, bleach her asshole. And then Part 2, which, eh. And then the theme of religion and theology that the album starts out with just dies. It's just gone. It doesn't come back after that. Which, under most circumstances, I would view as a negative. But, I mean, this album is just so wild. I, I, I have to give it props. It's just, it's all over the place. Like I said, it's an anti-album. It, it almost does everything that you shouldn't do, and it does it on purpose just to fuck with you. I don't even know what the theme of this album is. It keeps changing every few songs. For me, the real standout tracks off this are Ultralight Beam, Waves, Real Friends, Wolves, 30 Hours, Definitely No More Parties in LA, and the track that was added after the fact, St. Pablo, which I think is a necessary closer to the album. It just doesn't really work that well with Fade being the last track. Since this is an anomaly of an album and it kept changing in the months following its release, he was actually able to talk about the album's general reception and the piracy problem that stemmed from the fact that it was only available on Tidal. And it is not very common to have a track on an album that is able to talk about how the world responded to the album. Since, you know, tracks aren't usually added to albums. I do have some gripes with this album. Like, I don't like highlights or facts very much especially facts. They're just some very basic lyrics over a beat that I really do not like at all. But yeah, this album has just slowly been growing on me, and who knows, it might keep moving up in the ranks as time goes by. As of a few days ago, my favorite track on here is No More Parties in LA. Because damn, I mean, Kendrick spits fire on this track, but oh my god, Kanye's verse, th this is one of his best verses, period. It's funny that the one track that calls back to his old sound is actually my favorite track off this album, even though I really like the abrasive, unpolished sound the album pushes. Really 
I just went to the doctors and then came back. The lighting's slightly different, you can probably tell. But who cares? You're probably more concerned about the fact that I didn't put my beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy at number one. Listen. I'm a little concerned too, because frankly, I love this album. There's not a track off of it that I would say is downright bad, though some of them come a little close. So why is it only at number five? Well, because the four I have over it, I would argue, are even greater. Now, many people would classify this as the perfect Kanye album, because in many ways it bridges the gap between the early Kanye sound and the later Kanye sound. There is some of that classic Kanye down-to-earth soul sampleness on this album, but there's also that sort of more gritty, experimental edge that he veered more into after this album. And I like that. Now, Dark Fantasy is one of my favorite album openers ever. And it is followed up by another great track, Gorgeous. Gorgeous is then followed up by The Amazing Power, which is a song that is not only catchy as hell, but with its all, oh, hey, oh, but also features some fantastic lost in his own ego Kanye lyrics. My childlike creativity, purity, and honesty is honestly being crowded by these grown thoughts. Reality is catching up with me. Taking my inner child, I'm fighting for custody with these responsibilities that they entrusted me as I look down at my diamond encrusted piece. That's pretty that's pretty good. That's pretty good lyricism. It's pretty good. So an incredible opening to the album. But it's not all sunshine and rainbows. We get all of the lights, which kind of feels a little overdone with its features, in my opinion. And then Monster, which has the same problem. And then So Appalled, which has the same problem. And then to counter the fantastic lyrics that are on power, uh, Runaway, which is kind of the centerpiece of the album in many ways, um, controversial opinion, uh, doesn't have the greatest lyrics. I mean, I really like the chorus, so let's have a toast to the douchebags. So have a toast to the assholes, but the verses, in my opinion, are a little weaker. And yeah, I think uh, the last few songs on the album are a little weaker. The last track on the album, Who Will Survive in America, uh, takes a sample from Gil Scott Heron, which I don't think thematically connects up to the rest of the album that much, but it's still uh, a decently effective closer. I forgot to mention it, but my favorite song from the album is Power, with Devil in a New Dress just behind it. So yeah, all in all, I really like this album, but personally, I don't like it quite as much as... Hey Clayton, can our first song go like this? And then turn into one of those songs that go... Yeezy season approaching, fuck what up. Jesus, man. Jesus. Probably Kanye's most out there album. Not super well received upon release. I can kind of understand why, but let's give credit where credit is due. I think Yeezus is an incredibly well-rounded album. Now to be fair, some people act like this was just as influential and ahead of its time as 808's was, and um, I do not agree with that. Well, 808's went on to define the sort of trap pop sound that we are more accustomed to today. Yeezus, on the other hand, was kind of borrowing a sound that had already existed. And I think groups like Death Grips, before this album, uh, had utilized the sound to um, even better results with albums like The Money Store. But still, credit where credit is due, it's a great album. And Black Skinhead is like top five Kanye songs for me, possibly even top three. Bound 2 definitely is top three. Yeah, I, li I like all the tracks on here. Uh, not a whole bunch of criticizing for me to do. Um, I guess the opener on site is, in my opinion, probably the weakest track on the album. If I had to make one criticism, um, I don't think Kanye's best lyrics are on this album. I think the lyrics on this album are okay. Um, there are some verses that I would say are a little weaker, but I think it's made up for, for just how great the producing on this album is. It is just rough and jagged enough without crossing the line that it sounds downright bad. I'd still say Life of Pablo is a little bit more of an anti-album than this because that just jumps around with styles and is just all over the place all around. This album is more consistently sort of noise rap, but it is definitely more abrasive sounding than Life of Pablo. Keep moving forward, keep moving forward. Kids see you go sometimes, kids see you go sometimes, running around. Damn, this was better than I thought it was gonna be. This album is in many ways the sister album of Ye. It also delves into some darker places. However, 
this album is less focused on Kanye as a person and more sort of Kanye's ideas about the world we live in. And of course, it's not just Kanye contributing to that because this is a collaboration with Kid Cudi. When I was talking about the collaborations uh, Kanye and Cudi did together that were better than Welcome to Heartbreak, this is mostly what I was talking about. Just every track on here is, is great. It, the album has this really unique, futuristic kind of sound. I'm not gonna go out there and say that this is another 808s, because it's not. But I don't think this album sounds all that similar to most of what we're hearing on the charts. I mean, I love just about everything this album has to offer. I love the album cover. I think the lyricism is very strong here. Um, but most of all, just the producing and work that went into creating the instrumentals for these tracks. I think, I think some of the absolute best from not only Kanye's career, but the best from Kid Cudi's career, period. I think Kanye and Cudi kind of played off each other in one of the best possible ways that they could have when making this album. Because as we've seen with Kid Cudi, um, he's very good at coming up with kind of dreamy, lucrative sounding ideas for his music, but sometimes he gets a little carried away with the experimentation. He puts out a um, fairly underwhelming project just because I think all the ideas that come into his head he ends up using and there's just not that much of a quality filter. Kanye, on the other hand, has proven himself to be a hardened producer who is more than happy to scrap months of work. And I think um, Cuddy's fantastic ideas were kind of coming through Kanye's uh, quality filter and then Kanye uh, used his skills to help refine them and what we ended up getting was just amazing. Not to say Kanye didn't also contribute ideas to the creative process here. Uh, his fingerprints are all over this album. Yeah, all in all, just, um, I don't really have anything negative to say. Um, I like every track on here. Uh, it'd be very difficult for me to pick out a weakest track. I'd have to put thought into that. I mean, if, if I was held at gunpoint, I'd probably say Fourth Dimension, but I mean, I still like that song a lot. I think I can say with confidence, though, that in my opinion, the strongest track off here is Cutty Montage, which is a powerful and emotional ending to the album. How you son? I don't know how this got out of hand either, but as a student who's been at Greendale for over a decade, I, I think I've earned the right to say a few final words. Yeah. I'm so good. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Let's burn this mother down! So, Yeezy's debut, The College Dropout. This album was, as I'm sure you know, a huge success. It broke away from the mold of gangster rap that was dominating uh, the scene in 2004, and instead opted for a more down-to-earth, bittersweet style. This album is just, this is really fun to listen to. I mean, Kanye had been developing the beats that he ended up using for this album for uh, years, so there was a lot of time that went into refining these songs, and I think it really shows. This is an incredibly polished album. Also, the skits on this album are actually entertaining, which, if you listen to many albums from 2004, is very rare. I mean, I'm just looking through the track list right now. Um, again, like with Kitsy Ghosts, um, there are no tracks that I dislike on here. However, that's even more impressive considering that there are a lot more tracks on here. And when I listen to this, this underlying tone of determination from Kanye uh, kind of trickles through the more sort of playfulness that a lot of the lyrics offer up. Like, I mean, as you know, he recorded one of these songs with his jaw wired shut because he was just so determined to get this shit out there. And Last Call is just him telling the story of how he had to claw his way up to get this thing released in the first place. There's just a lot of personality and soul in this album that I don't think you find in many huge releases like this, but certainly not ones from 2004. I mean, there's a lot more I could say, but I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone's already heard this album, and it is nostalgic for a lot of people at this point. So I'll just keep it brief by saying that my favorite track on here, that's a tough one. I wanna say All Falls Down, but I also wanna say Spaceship. But I also want to say family business. And then Through the Wire is tempting as well. Um, I'll just say, like, 
all four of those. Those are those are all like tied for my favorite on here. Maybe maybe all falls down just slightly edges them out. I don't know. We sing in opera, how? And I'm in love with a nigga. Those hoes really don't love you, man. Those hoes gone like they okay. This mouth does more than see, nigga. So yes, I have awarded the top spot to Late Registration. An album which, for some reason, I keep seeing crop up around the bottom of people's Kanye tier lists. I mean, why? This album is so good. It's a little less experimental than a lot of Kanye albums, I guess. It's kind of playing off the sound that he started with the college dropout, but he, a little bit more fine-tuned since he had more of a budget and a little bit more experience. But I mean, as far as I'm concerned, this album has it all. I mean. They're bangers, like Gold Digger, obviously, but then the tenderness from the college dropout carries through with some even more impactful lyrics and I think some even more developed beats, as much as I really like the lyrics on College Dropout as well. Now, I don't want to imply from the fact that Late Registration and College Dropout are my number one and two slots that I think this is um, definitively the superior Kanye sound, and I think he should have stuck with this sound because. I'm glad that he ended up branching out. I mean, not only did he end up inspiring a new generation of uh, pop music, but also, I mean, this sound inevitably would have gotten stale if he just kept repeating it over and over again. Um, I really do enjoy his experimentation and his, and his more uh, gritty albums like Jesus and Life of Pablo. But at the end of the day, when it comes to what I think his best album is, I would say late registration. I mean, let's go through this thing track by track. So it opens with Wake Up Mr. West, which behind Dark Fantasy and um, maybe Say You Will would be my third favorite opener to a Kanye album. But then from there, it's just great track after great track. I mean, there's Heard Him Say, Touch the Sky, Gold Digger, Drive Slow, My Way Home, Crack. I'm just gonna be, be listing all, all the tracks on this album. I mean, every track on here is a standout, but I mean, if I had to pick the standouts from the standouts, um, I mean, I guess Roses, um, Addiction, Diamonds from Sierra Leone, obviously, which deals with uh, heavier topics than Kanye songs usually do, but I think does it in a very effective manner. That, of course, being the horrendous diamond industry in Sierra Leone. But the way he goes about addressing that issue is tying it to himself, of course, and how it uh, parallels uh, his life in the music industry. Is it maybe a little insensitive? Shut up. I mean, Hey Mama melts my heart every time I hear it. Celebration can just instantly lift my mood when I listen to it. And the album Closer Late uh, solicits a very strong feeling of nostalgia in me, even though I didn't know the song when I was a kid. I don't know why. Uh, it, it just does. It somehow percolated itself into my brain. I also forgot to mention for this one that my favorite song is Diamonds from Sierra Leone. But addiction is also pretty good. Roses is also pretty good. Yeah, I think that this is the pinnacle of Kanye West music. Now, just to reiterate, I'm not saying he should go back to the sound. Uh, I'm more than happy to have him put out the occasional No More Parties in LA um, while still having the overall sound of his albums be different because I think for Kanye to remain relevant and for his albums to remain uh, fresh, he has to keep changing up his sound, which is what he's been doing, so I'm not concerned. Maybe I'm a little concerned. I have not done any drugs. I've drank in a little bit, but if, even if I wasn't drinking, I would tell you the same thing. What do it take to be number one? You are in the presence of a champion. Bow in the presence of greatness, family. Understand what I'm saying? It's 960. The people came out. The people have chosen. People came out, bought the album. They love the album. I can't walk down the street. Yay, we love the album. I say, man, I know it's great, isn't it?